Okay guys, so this is going to be a really fast rundown of the most important people according to the College Board um, as far as the history of psychology goes. So people have been thinking about the mind for a long time. So what is the mind? Is it in the heart? Is it, um, can we separate it from the brain? I mean, there's been all kinds of thoughts as what is the mind. Um, but we're going to kind of start um, looking at um, psychology as a study within the last 200 years. So um, let's kind of just walk through some of the people that they want you to know for the most notable people in psychology. So we're going to start with um, a lady named Dorothea Dix. Um, and she is someone who um, isn't necessarily involved in psychology at all, but she is somebody who is um, really important for advocating for mental health. And so that's why they include her on the um important people to know for psychology. She lived during like the Civil War era and sh what she did was she advocated to the United States Congress that we needed to treat people with um, mental illnesses like they had illnesses and that's how how we treat them today that it's that's an illness and that it can be treated and um, they can be working towards functioning in everyday life but at that point they were living in almost an asylum or well not even an asylum more like cages um, like a zoo is how um, people were treated and so she tried to move towards having asylums having these hospitals that um, people could go to and so she advocated to Congress that we could have those places for um, people who were struggling with mental health um, issues and so then we're going to move on um, this isn't necessarily chronological it's just hitting some of the main people so the next is Wilhelm Wundt um, it's spelled with W like Wilhelm Wundt um, and he developed the um, first uh, laboratory for experimental psychology and so um, this is the first place where people started um, looking at psychology as a science that could be experimentation could take place. Um, his idea was structuralism, and he wanted to understand the structures of the mind. We don't really use structuralism anymore, but that's he started with that. And then what's going to follow is William James, and he is what we consider the father of American psychology. He was an American and brought this science to the United States. And um, his idea was functionalism. So um, Wilhelm Wundt was structuralism, his was functionalism. How do we how do we take those structures and find out their application, um, how they function? Um, let's go next, Stanley or G. Stanley Hall, and so. <laughs> Um, G. Stanley Hall, he was um, the first president of the APA, um, and so he, the APA is the American Psychological Association, and this was established to help um, produce the literature and the research that was being done through the field of psychology, and he created the first um, American Psychological Journal. Um, Sigmund Freud, let's move on to him. He um, is very notable in psychology because a lot of his studies are still referenced today, but not of them a lot are a lot of them are 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 used. Um, his some of his ideas are still um, very important, but um, a lot of people have have moved past some of his ideas and on to newer thoughts. And so he really focused on understanding the unconscious mind. And so what he would do was a lot of things that couldn't be um, like actually seen. It was more um, his interpretation. So how could he interpret the unconscious mind of someone? He used dream analysis and hypnosis um, to try to under to uncover the unconscious mind. Um, next, um, let's do um, let's do Mary Witten Hawkins. She's somebody that the um, College Board wants you to know because um, she is the first female APA president, and this is a big deal because that's about all you need to know. Because if you go to um, uh, the next person is Margaret Foy Washburn. She is actually the first woman to receive a PhD in psychology. And Mary Witten's Cockin could not receive a PhD because Harvard would not allow her to have a PhD because she was a female. And so when she's followed by Margaret Foy Washburn, she is the first woman to actually be awarded a PhD. 
I know I'm kind of jumping back and forth, but Mary Winton's Calkins, she actually did all of the research, all of the necessary um, steps in the process to becoming a doctor of psychology, but they wouldn't grant her the degree. And so she's going to be followed by Margaret Floyd Washburn, who is the first woman who receives um, a PhD in psychology, and then she becomes the second woman to uh, be a president of um, the APA. So they're not like in the grand scheme of the things that we're going to be talking about in class. We probably won't bring them up again, but for the history of psychology as a study, they're pretty important. Um, next, next, next. Um, Charles Darwin, we're really not going to talk about him in class much, but um, if you know his ideas about evolution, it influenced the way certain psychologists viewed um, um, different aspects of psychology and so there are psychologists that call themselves evolutionary psychologists and so Charles Darwin is not a psychologist but some of his ideas influenced certain areas of psychology so um, that's why he is somebody they want you to know um, John B Watson he's gonna come up later in class John B Watson he is not John Watson the Sherlock John Watson he is a psychologist that follows Freud and he believes that Freud you just can't even you, you nothing Freud does can be proved because it's all just your interpretation of the mind and so um, John Watson is very concrete he wants to see the observable and so he establishes this uh, perspective called behaviorism and that you just focus on the observable behaviors um, his really famous experiment is little Albert um, where he conditions a, a young child to fear rats um, let's go on to Ivan Pavlov. Ivan Pavlov actually, um, um, he is a little bit before John Watson and, and he influences John Watson a lot in his ideas of behaviorism, but he has a separate thing going on where he is studying, he's not a psychologist, he's actually studying dogs' digestive systems. And he finds out through his study that he can train dogs to salivate to things that are not food like sounds and lights, and he um, establishes this um, thing called classical conditioning where he ha he realizes that you can you can train the mind to expect something to happen and you can actually have like a biological result of that so you can salivate to not the chemical response of food but to sounds so um, he's not a psychologist but that really influences John B. Watson um, B.F. Skinner, he is also going to fall into the, the field of behaviorism where he is focusing on um, the observable behaviors of learning um, and he develops something called operant conditioning. Um, he trains pigeons and that's um, something that he focuses on that he can teach pigeons to read, um, to guide missiles in World War II. And it's all through rewards and consequences and he establishes a, a basically a consequence in a reward schedule called schedules of reinforcement and there are different ways to um, issue rewards and he shows how you can learn based on schedules of reinforcement. Um, another one that they want you to know is Jean Piaget and he's a developmental psychologist. He studies um, one of his, his, his very big um, influences in psychology is childhood cognitive development. And um, we'll learn a lot about him later when we get to the development unit. But he, um, he creates stages and he sees how children develop over time and, and he has created stages to help us understand what's normal development for children, um, cognitive development for children as they develop. Um, Carl Rogers is important because he founded the perspective on humanism, um, he, or humanistic psychology, and he founded psychotherapy, which is talk therapy, where you would sit and, um, talk with a counselor. And, um, if you want to know more about humanism, you can go to the perspectives, um, video that I have, but that's just a really, really, really quick rundown of the, um, the few, <laughs> like 13-ish people that, um, the College Board deems as important to, um, the study of psychology and the development of psychology today. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Thanks, bye!